the question was asked for this problem, how to answer part C. So how to find the velocity when you reach a certain mile per hour. So how we're going to find this value, okay, well, we'll find the, uh, the distance traveled, is we're going to take a look at the velocity function. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to add up over the velocity function. But now we need the amount of time. So clearly, it's from zero to something. We just don't know what that something is. So what we need to do is we need to find out when is the velocity equal to 500. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at, at that. So to find the velocity equal to 500, it's a separate question over here. So what we want is when is V of T equal to 500? So in other words, when is 30 times 25 minus T squared equal to 500? So if we divide both sides by 30, we have 25. Well, there's a couple ways that we can solve this. I'm not sure if that's the best way or not. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go like this. Um, I'm going to divide both sides by 10. So I'm going to have 3 times 25 minus t squared is equal to 50. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute my 3 in. So that's 75 minus 3t squared is equal to 50. And then I'm going to move everything to one side. So I want to solve this quadratic here. So that'll give me 3t squared okay, um, <clears throat> plus 50 minus 75. So that's 3t squared minus 25. I'm going to move the 25 over. I suppose I would have had to move. I could have just moved this over right away. It would have been easier, but uh, this will give me 25 is equal to 3t squared or 25 thirds. Now, leave your answers in fractions, guys. Don't round things. Don't do things out on your calculator if you don't have to. And the reason that I say that is because 25 thirds is an exact value. So just a, a quick segue here, just a, or a little... Um, I guess maybe segue is the right, the right word. This guy right here, 25 thirds, is a repeating decimal. But you can't write it out as point whatever repeating, okay? You need to leave it as a fraction. Otherwise, you're not writing down the exact value. So leave it like this. And so, of course, t then is equal to the square root of 25 thirds, or 5 over the square root of 3. Now, it would be plus or minus, but I'm not concerned when t is negative, okay? Because of this, well, well not even just because of that, because of this right here, okay? And this right here, okay? So we're, we're always having our time value between 0 and 3. Rationalize my denominator. So we get 5 square roots of 3 over 3. Now if you go ahead and you do that, if you do that number on your calculator, you want to leave it like that, okay? We'll leave it like that number. But if you do it on your calculator, I just want to give you a decimal approximation. So that's approximately equal to 2.887 for your time. This is the guy over here, though. This guy right here is the one that we want to use. So that is our question mark value. That's the guy that we want to integrate to. So 5 square roots of 3 over 3. Leave it like this. Don't, do not put it like that. Okay. Leave it like this as long as you possibly can. Okay, now, one way to check that is the following. We want to know when is the velocity equal to 500. So what I've done is I've graphed out using Desmos, right here, I've graphed out our velocity function. So 
at zero, it's up at 750, okay, and the velocity tails off to five seconds. Now we're really only concerned with up to up to three seconds right here, okay? Now when is when is this function, when is the height of this function, the velocity, when is it equal to 500? So when is it at a height of 500? If I graph y equals 500, I find the intersection of those two, which is 2.887. If you go back and look, 2.887 was exactly what I found. So you wouldn't use the graph in utility to find your solution. You use it to justify your solution. So right now I'm just checking to make sure that I came up with the right value, and I did. So now what I need to do is I need to do this integration. So we need to find an antiderivative, which we've already done, but I'll go ahead and I'll do it again. Okay, so v of t, since v of t was equal to 30 times 25 minus t squared, we want to integrate, find an antiderivative of that guy. Okay, so that is 30 times the integral of 25 minus t squared dt. So this is going to be 30 times 25, <clears throat> which again is our 750. So this will be this will be the integral of 750 dt minus 30 times the integral of t squared dt. So this is 750t plus some constant of integration and this is minus um, 30 times t to the third over 3 plus another constant of integration. So this will be 750t minus 10 t to the third. Now what we want to do is we want to evaluate that between 0 and 5 square roots of 3 over 3. So we'll plug in 5 square roots of 3 over 3. So this will be 750 times 5 square roots of 3 over 3 minus 10 times 5 square roots of 3 over 3 to the third minus zero plugged into the, both those is zero. So this is what I gotta figure out here. So I've got 750, multiply that by five, <clears throat> divide that by three is 1250. Okay, so 750 times five over three is 1250, and we got that square root of three at the end. Minus, now we gotta raise this guy to the third first before we multiply by 10. So that'll be 125, Square root of 3 times a square root of 3 times a square root of 3 is 3 square roots of 3. And then 3 times 3 times 3 is 27 on the bottom. Like that. So this would be 1250 square root of 3 minus 10 times. Now this 3 and this cancel to give me a 9. And 125 is not divisible by 9. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that this is... Um, 125 square roots of 3 over 9 like that. <clears throat> so this is going to be 1250 times the square root of 3 minus 1250 times the square root of 3 over 9. I multiply the 10 in. So let's get this guy over 9 as well. So that's 1250 times 9. So that's 1, 1, 2, 5, 0, square roots of 3, minus 1250, square roots of 3, all over 9. Which gives me, let's write minus 1250. I didn't write it right there. Okay, so that's 1, 1, 2, 5, 0, minus 1, 2, 5, 0. So that is going to give me, 10,000 square roots of 3 over 9. And so that 
is approx this is the exact answer. That's approximately equal to 1924.5. Okay, so if you go ahead and check that answer, I believe that that should be should be correct.